So which MacBook Pro is right for you? M4, M5, M4 Pro or M4 Max? Should you go with 14 inch or 16 inch? What are some of the differences? Because I've gone a little bit more in depth and then figured out what's the actual performance difference of all of the MacBook Pros. So if you're wondering, I'm a photographer, what should I do? Videographer, 3D, what should I do? We're gonna go very technical, but also very basic. So there's a lot to find out in this video. So hopefully by the end of the video, you actually know which MacBook Pro is right for you. Let's go. By the way, if you wanna pick up any of these MacBook Pros, I highly recommend checking out my links in the video description below, which are affiliate links and no extra cost to you. I get a small commission to help make these videos, but they're also cheaper than Apple's own website. So if you are wanting to get them slightly cheaper, even the M5, the brand new one, there's options down below. So firstly, let's take a look at the 14 inch and 16 inch because you're gonna have to decide which one is right for you. There's some limitations to both of them. If you like the big screen real estate and you're thinking you're really, really pro and you want to have as much of the pro on the go, then the 16 inch only offers M4 Pro and M4 Max chips. The benefit is it's a lot bigger battery and a lot bigger screen, so that's that. But if you are thinking that the 14 inch is right for you, you have also the option of M5 and some of the old M4s you might find there as well. So I'll add the M4 into the mix as well. The 14 inch has a smaller screen, smaller battery compared to the 16 inch. 16 inch doesn't offer you the M5. Also, if you like Thunderbolt 5, then you're gonna have to go with M4 Pro or M4 Max chips because those have Thunderbolt 5 ports. The M5 has just Thunderbolt 4 and so is the M4. Okay, that's the basics. Now we're gonna get a little bit in depth, but bear with me. So firstly, I wanted to see how much Apple actually innovates and how much Apple just kind of force feeds more power through the chip and then makes it look like bigger. Basically, the more power you put onto the chip, the more performance you get. But if you want to keep the same power but get better performance, you're gonna have to innovate. You're gonna have to make some kind of technological technologia innovations. So here we can see that the M4 is pulling 22 watts on the CPU and GPU is nine. Moving to M5, the power consumption now goes up as well, 26 and nine. The GPU is the same, but the CPU has gone up by 18%. Moving on to M4 Pro, we're basically doubling the power consumption compared to M4. The GPU only goes slightly up, but still a lot higher. The M4 Max now is 55 watts. That's double the wattage of M5 and more than double of the M4. And the GPU is more than four times as much as M4. So the GPU goes massively higher on the M4 Max, whereas on the M4 and 5, it only goes slightly up compared to the M4 Pro. So bear that in mind. So you can easily see the green on the charts, that's a lot higher. So the M4 Max is on a whole other level in terms of power draw, but what about performance? Does it line up? Firstly, we're looking at Cinebench R24. So this is a CPU test where we're testing the CPU cores. Now bear in mind, the M4 Pro that I have in there is the base model where we have only 12 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores. You can upgrade it to 14 cores and then 20 core GPU, but you'll get only a little bit more performance, if that makes sense. But the M4 Max is the 16 core and 40 core variant, if that makes sense. So this is the maximum of Apple, whereas the M4 Pro could go a little bit more, but I felt like the base model of M4 Pro makes more sense than actually upgrading the chip. Now bear that in mind when upgrading on Apple's website, because sometimes you do certain upgrades and you have to upgrade the chip as well, just so you know. But when looking at single core performance, the M5 is the fastest chip out there. It's about 12% faster than M4, which is basically the same 12% faster than the M4 Max. The M4, M4 Pro and M4 Max, they're within one, two percent, so they're within margin of error, really performing the same. But now looking at the multi-core performance, you can see that the M5 very nicely slots somewhere between the M4 Pro and then M4. It's about 20% increase in multi-core compared to the M5, but then the M4 Pro is more than 20% 
increase in terms of CPU power and then the M4 Max is again on a whole other level. The M4 Max is more than double the CPU performance compared to the M4. Interestingly, the M4 is 10 cores, whereas the M4 Max is 16 cores, yet we're getting more than double the performance with 16 cores but we're not doubling the CPU cores. That is amazing innovation. We're looking at the Geekbench 6 and we're here seeing basically very, very similar scores. Geekbench 6, if you don't know, tests lots of different things that the CPU might do. Opening different documents, different programs, different software, you know, compressing, uncompressing, looking at things, different effects CPU might do. And that's a general CPU test, whereas the Cinebench one was more like rendering, CPU rendering that a creator might do. But again, we're seeing a similar thing where M5 kind of slots in single core faster than anything else, but then in multi-core somewhere between the M4 and M4 Pro. Moving on to GPU. So this is the iGPU Geekbench 6. We're testing OpenCL and Metal scores. So look at the OpenCL scores, you can see that there is kind of a little step between M4 to M5, about 25, 6%, something like that. In Metal, there's a bigger jump, about 40% faster on M5 compared to the M4. That is pretty insane. And then the M4 Max is a whole other level where you can see kind of equal going up between M4, M5, and then M4 Pro, but then M4 Max is just somewhere in a different area. Looking at AI scores, so we've got single half and quantized scores. Now, interestingly, I don't know what's going on, but sometimes the M5 is performing better in the GPU, so this is, we're using GPU, than the M4 Pro and M4 Max. Doesn't really make much sense to me, but it's a little bit weird. Everything else kind of steps up equally, but when you get to half and quantized, it just goes on a whole other level. Perhaps that is because the M5 GPU cores have a neural engine attached to every single one of the GPU cores, which means that it just performs better in AI tasks. And here I can see that it's better than M4 Max, which is interesting. Let me know if you've seen similar things, anybody? But moving more creator-focused benchmarks, and here we have Photoshop. Photoshop likes to use very fast cores, and interestingly, the M5 is faster than the M4 Pro. So if you're doing Photoshop purely, then perhaps going with M5 makes a lot more sense than going with M4 Pro because you can see the overall score is faster on the M5. It's not quite as fast as the M4 Max, but regardless, it's pretty impressive. Moving on to video editing, and I'm using Premiere Pro for this example here. And we can see the standard and extended overall scores. And it actually, there's pretty equal steps up what we've seen before. The M5, again, slots somewhere between M4 and M4 Pro, but then the M4 Max is actually a bigger jump up compared to M5 to M4 Pro. The future M5 Max and M5 Pro I'm quite excited to see where that is going to lead because that's pretty crazy. Now, you can dive a little bit deeper into each one of these actual raw codecs and there you can see that going from M4 to M5 sometimes is a huge increase, especially when it comes to raw or GPU effects. You can see there's a huge, huge difference in the there. But also when it comes to Interframe, which is ProRes, going from M5 to M4 Pro, there's also a huge jump because the M4 Pro and M4 Max will have different dedicated encoders for the video playback, especially ProRes. So if you're looking to do video editing, then the M4 Pro and M4 Max will give you huge, huge difference, especially if you're doing it with Apple ProRes or any ProRes really codex, or you are editing in Final Cut, then the M4 Pro and Max are much better. But again, the M4 Max is just an absolute insane machine. And you can see by the fingerprints, this has been my daily for over a year at this point now. It's only recently been replaced with the Asus Pro IP16 with the RTX 5090 that I'm testing out, but it is really, really impressive. I feel like the Pro IP16, side note here, is weak in the CPU performance, but very, very strong on the GPU. But then the MacBook, again, is really, really strong on the CPU, which Premiere Pro likes, but then not so strong on the GPU. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and here we're seeing very, very similar things. The M5 though here is closer to the M4 Pro. 
if you're looking at the scores than on previous charts. So that just shows that the GPU upgrade and how DaVinci Resolve can take advantage of the GPU and the neural engines on the GPU cores really works quite close to the M4 Pro. And that's quite impressive actually. But then M4 Max, whole other different ballpark of figures in there is really, really absolutely amazing. In fact, if we're looking at the AI score in particular, the M5 is faster than the M4 Pro in the AI scores. So that again shows us that Apple has worked on the AI and on the AI scores. So when it comes to AI max masking, tracking, for example, in DaVinci Resolve, the M5 is really, really impressive. And we can see that the upgrade for the M5 Pro and M4 Max M5 Max, sorry, will be quite impressive. Even Fusion, interestingly, is faster on the M5 than on the M4 Pro. So have a look at some of these details in here, what you can see. But the M5 is actually pretty, pretty impressive when it comes to DaVinci Resolve for video editing. The only recommendation for me is just upgrade the RAM, then you might see even more performance and you will be very, very close to the M4 Pro. Moving on to Blender, and this is CPU rendering now. Again, we're seeing very, very similar trend here. Equal steps up, but then M4 Max, a whole other level. The M4 Max, I'm just letting you know, this is, this is like the desktop CPU kind of level of things in CPU rendering. It's seriously impressive. Uh, I've yet to see anything that comes close to that type of performance on battery on a laptop. It's unheard of really. When it comes to GPU, this is Blender 4.5. The higher is better, by the way. It's not rendering, it's samples per minute. That's how the benchmark works. We're seeing that the M4 Max is even more better than, you know, previously. This is where it really shines the most. The M4 Max with a 40 core GPU is really, really on a whole other level. So if you're doing anything remotely 3D related, going with the M4 Max makes a lot more sense than you actually think. It's, it's just so much better than something else. In fact, I'm getting more than double the performance on M4 Max compared to the M4 Pro. So bear that in mind. There's there's like double of the performance in 3D when you're coming from Pro to Max. It's pretty crazy. And then looking at speedometer, which is a browser benchmark, and I have to test this again, but the M5 is just the fastest. M4 and M4 Pro and Max, they kind of perform the same. In fact, the M4 sometimes perform better than the M4 Pro, but they're kind of the same, but the M5 faster. So if you just want snappy browser workflow, the M5 is the fastest out there. And then finally looking at Redshift, which is another GPU rendering uh, application here, we can see that M5 is about 30% increase compared to the M4. And then we're getting about the same, maybe slightly more on the M4 Pro. And then the M4 Max is more than three and a half times as good as the M4. And we're getting more than double the performance from M4 Pro to M4 Max. So now then, in terms of performance, hopefully you can see now the different workflows if you're a photographer, or if you like to edit video, if you're in 3D, there's different things that might work better for you and different configurations. One of the main things that I highly recommend for you is to upgrade your RAM. If you're thinking about upgrading anything else, I think storage you can figure out externally. I've got plenty of guides on my channel. Just go on Technotis and type in Apple storage and you'll see I've, I've given you lots of different things. You can fix the storage externally. There's not a problem. What you can fix is the memory. Having more memory will not just give you better performance in applications that run out of memory, it will also give you a longer laptop life because it doesn't have to swap so much with the SSD and the SSD is not going to run out as much. So I highly recommend checking out some of the links in the video description below and upgrade the RAM if possible. And by the way, if you are in the UK and you're buying some of the laptops, you might also notice that there are no chargers in the case. Again, I'm gonna leave some chargers in the description below, but here, what I'm using, it's not a sponsor of this video, but I am loving these. Anchor has these small chargers. This is 140 watts. It's smaller than Apple's 96 watt charger. It's got multiple parts. It charges faster. You can charge multiple devices. It's got a screen on so you can actually see how much power is actually going through. And if you want something on the go, 
portable. We've got this Anchor power bank with this dock. This is 250 watts that you can charge through these ports. You can take it with you, come back home, you charge it on the dock in there or have some of these side chargers here as well. Some really cool charging options that are just so much better than what Apple offers in there. I'm gonna leave the link in the video description below as well. So which MacBook are you gonna go for? Hopefully this was helpful for you. I'll see you next time. Subscribe if you haven't already because videos like these, that's what we're doing. And no, I'm not gonna do any gaming on this channel. No chance. No gaming. All right, I'm done.